aside from that, from from a playing perspective, I mean, you are looking at one of the best centre backs in the world now, aren't you? Und- undoubtedly, yeah. undoubtedly, and I don't think his I don't think his name is mentioned when the debate is had about how good John Stones is. Mm. If you think about what he has done for this City team, the way that he has changed and almost redefined the role of a centre-half, he sometimes, in the same breath, he plays centre-half and centre-forward in the same moment. You know, it's interesting you say that, actually. And again, I think sometimes it does go back to City, for some reason. Mm. Like, I feel like sometimes, still, to this day, we still don't like to give players credit that play for Man City, which I think is wrong. Um, but you're right, because when we do talk about the best defenders in the league this season, for example... Mm. I mean, it's Virgil van Dijk, it's Saliba, it's Gabriel. Mm. You don't really hear John Stones. And if you do talk about a City defender... You talk about it's Ruben Diaz. Diaz. I know, and, and John that? Stone's a better player than Diaz. Yeah, I know, no, I, com- now, I completely yeah. agree. Strange. Eddie, you've hit the nail on the head. I don't understand what it is with John Stones. I think it might be because he isn't your archetypal centre-half. You know when you think about the stereotypical centre-half? But he's more Ferdinand, isn't he? No. It, it, he's not even that. He's not even that. He's he's redefined what a central defender is, and therefore he isn't comparable. Like, you can't really compare the way that John Stones plays football to, to the way that, that Tony Adams played football. Yeah, agree. Or the way that Des Walker played football. They're very different in their approach to being a centre-half. And therefore, unfortunately for John Stones, I think he gets the short end of the stick. Yeah, because there's no one necessarily to compare him to, right? I, I fully agree with what you're saying. All right, Faye Grovers has also caught up with England manager Gareth Southgate, who has addressed the links to Manchester the United, but begins by talking about the controversy surrounding the England shirt. Clearly, we've had kits before where the St George's flag hasn't been on it. So in terms of what definitely needs to be on the shirt, in my view, that's the three lines, because that's what is our iconic symbol, is recognised around the world. And... Um, differentiates us from England rugby and England cricket as well so um, then I guess what you're asking is if there's going to be a flag on the kit should it be uh, the flag of St George well which it it should because if it isn't red with a white background then it isn't the flag of St George so um, yeah I'm assuming that it's uh, when I looked at the shirt I didn't assume it was the flag of St George. I just assumed it was a, a sort of RT take on it, some sort of Banksy-esque type uh, thing. So I, I don't know that all the ins and outs. I'm not too bothered about it, really. Um, but I understand why people are patri- patriotic about the flag. Um, as I say, if it isn't a red cross and a white background, then in my view, it's not the flag of St George. Okay. Um, second off the field chat to have with you. It's the first time we've sat down since the links to to Manchester United. Just wondering what you think of all of that. Have you had an approach and is it affecting preparations at all for the Euros? Uh, no, it's not affecting anything. Um, I've been in a job for eight years where um, almost every day things are written about me that I have to get on with. Um, all I would say is I'm the manager of England. I've got one job pretty big one but we play Brazil tomorrow we head towards the Euros in the summer Um, and also Manchester United have a manager Um, and I think when stories are written about clubs where there's a manager in place I think that's completely disrespectful. Is it still flattering to be linked with a club like Manchester United though? Uh, I'm not even going that route because I'm the manager of England and if I entertain any sort of um, comment on that then there'll be a, a another story of oxygen and yeah so no no smoke without fire though is there uh gareth southgate there speaking to our england correspondent faker Carruthers uh, earlier on today this is interesting this united thing because I mean, for me i find away, i find it, it wild mm. like, you know you, you hear that you listen to united fans and hear their response on social media they're not happy at all no, but should not, they be <laughs> but it's not going be? away it's not going away gareth southgate is one of the most distinctly average managers that has ever been lucky enough to get the England job. The fact that he is suddenly linked with the biggest job in the country, I really don't understand it. I think it's great. I almost want it to happen. But it's ludicrous. Look, I'm not Eric Ten Hag's biggest fan. But Eric Ten Hag is ten times the manager Gareth Southgate is. They'd be insane. They'd be absolutely insane to get rid of Eric Ten Hag and bring in somebody as mediocre as Southgate. That's the very definition of out of the frying pan and into the fire. It's crazy, right? Because everyone's uh, happy right now with the new ownership. That could turn sour very, very quickly if Gareth Southgate is in the hot seat at Old Trafford in the summer. Actually, in fact, this is more of a question on the Netherlands. How well do you think they'll do in the Euros? I know they're in a tough group. 
But when you just heard there, like Gakpo over to Jorginho Wijnaldum, obviously Van Dijk. Yeah, I mean, it's Van Dijk, it's, it's, it's Van Dijk, it's Frankie de Jong, it's Nathan Ake. I think they'll do very well. Solid it's team, it's isn't Ronald it? Koeman back there as well, isn't yeah. it? Ronald Koeman's gone back. Obviously, he has a winner's mentality. In fact, he would have won it with the uh, with the Dutch side, wouldn't he? In 1988. Oh, Van Basten. Yeah. yeah, that Van Basten. Yeah, against yeah, the USSR. Ronald, Hullet, all that lot, yeah. He would, have, he would have won it. They're, they're always competitive. I thought they were brilliant in the World Cup as well. Mm. I thought they were really good. That game good. against Argentina was fantastic. It was fantastic. That was as fiery as it But they, but they, were, they were, were, great, gets... they were a great side. And you've got to remember at that stage, they had Louis van Gaal, who I thought was amazing. Mm. Like, during that tournament, he was training his players during the day and then going for... For, for you know rehabilitation therapy in the evening I think the Dutch are always contenders and the Dutch in Germany yeah there's a chance they could win it yeah I uh, remember you can listen to that game right now over on TalkSport 2 is the Netherlands to Scotland nil alright next we're going to be finding out about the Liverpool Legends game tomorrow afternoon who are going to be led out by the way this Liverpool team by lifelong Liverpool fan former England manager Sven Goran Eriksson on AM on DAB via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker TalkSport